So I'm going to the Musée du Louvre. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Maybe not. Musée de du Louvre, which is where the Mona Lisa is at. So I think I found the underground entrance. So the, the cool thing about the underground entrance is not that many people, not that many people really know about it. So a little birdie told me. Why not? My friend Celine told me she's from Paris. She's like, yeah, don't go up, don't stand in the line upstairs because that's where all the tourists go. Uh, a lot of people don't know that there's an underground entrance as well in this underground mall like directly under the museum so said the line wasn't that long and she told me that it should be free if you are a student now even though i'm not a student anymore maybe i can pass as well the underground entrance it only took me like 10 minutes to get in and get a ticket uh, it's also free if you're under 26, but you have to be from Europe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and go see the Mona Lisa. Get it out the way so I can enjoy the rest of the museum. It's a fairly large museum. I heard it could take like hours, if not the whole day, to see every single painting and sculpture that's in the Louvre or the Louvre I gotta figure out how you correctly pronounce that but so yeah we about to check it out Before I ate, I was in the Le Louvre, or Le Louvre, um, which is the uh, art gallery that uh, has the Mona Lisa in it. So, um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of art. It's a lot of art. If you like art and you want to see a good bit of it, it's going to take you like three, four hours. There's a lot of people there. I, well, I, I think I'm here during the peak season too, like tourist season, so... But yeah, man, if you're in the art museum, it's crazy because a lot of people there, um, they just snap pictures and move on and snap pictures. Like, they don't really sit there and appreciate the art. And that's a lot of art from a lot of famous artists as well as sculptors and architects. Uh, architects. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's filled, the Louvre is filled with tons of different things art-wise. Um, the Mona Lisa is definitely a battle zone in front of it just to get a picture of a decent picture of it and even if you get to the front it's hard to get a decent picture because it's behind a bulletproof glass and so it glares the reflection uh, when you take the picture so it's hard to get like a really good picture unless you stand from an angle but if you're going to go i definitely say take take some time to really stare at it like it, it's such like a controversial painting and a sense of like why is it so popular like it's really good because when you're walking around you're going to see tons of amazing amazing paintings but you're like why is this one so popular um but when you really look at it the detail the haziness that gives it the contrast and depth of field and the angle in which he's sitting and a little smirk that you, you can't you can't really see the smirk if you're up close and you look from a distance you can't really tell if she's smirking or not uh, and for me like the longer I looked at the painting like the more prettier she became the height the experience 
of the art gallery, uh, you should definitely listen to um, some opera music or some classical music. Like, just put some headphones in and, and tune everything else out and just walk around. It really, like, brings whatever story, the pictures, that uh, whatever story the painters are trying to paint come to life. Uh, let me see what else. But, yeah, there's a whole lot of history in there as well in this uh, art gallery. It's a great place to go. I'm also out here trying to work on my French. I picked up a few words. So we'll see. I got tomorrow and Saturday, and I leave Sunday morning to Madrid. So that's pretty much it. So I'm in the village or town of Versailles. I'm headed to the Palace of Versailles, which is kind of outside of Paris. It's a huge palace with a huge garden that King uh, Louis XIII built for himself. Because I think where he originally lived at in Paris didn't show off his wealth and dominance the way he wanted it to. So he built this palace uh, in the town of Versailles. Now I just have to find it. So looking at this, I can see why they chopped his head off and his wife. So basically, at least as my tour guide explained it, like a lot of people were very poor. Like they couldn't even afford food to eat. And during that time, their king built was building all these gigantic palaces and they were like all right that's it you know you're not taking care of us you're not doing your royal duties of taking care of your people so off with your head top and so they chopped his head off and they chopped his wife's head off like a couple weeks after but man these Kings and queens and priests, they got good taste though, man. They, they got some of the best architects to build their palaces and cathedrals. I give it to them, shit. I did the same thing too, if I had it like that. But, all these rooms, man. And so many poor people. That's another discussion for another day. So let me figure out how do I get into this palace. Man, I must say, it must have been nice to be a king. It'd be cool if these statues came to life at nighttime.
I gotta give it to uh, King Louis the Thirteenth, man. My dude got flavor. Man, he got. Man, he likes nice things. It, this this palace is nice. If you ever get a chance, you come to Paris. Go to the Palace of Versailles. Yeah, he likes. I mean, look at all these statues. I'm just walking around. I mean, I'm pretty sure it didn't look like this completely when he when he was living here but I'm pretty sure it, it is pretty close laid like a foundation to what we see now over time you know they made it look nice and pretty and prettier probably but regardless I'm pretty sure he still had like all this land wow like look at these trees like everything is like in a perfect line like can you imagine having a wedding here i'm speechless all right while i'm out here at this uh palace of versailles you know what i can't help to think about like since between london and paris i'm seeing and learning about all these powerful wealthy uh individuals and going to like the palace of versailles you've seen all these beautiful paintings and beautiful sculptures and stuff like that but i can't help to think like especially since i've been in like the old world in europe and seeing all these very old buildings and cathedrals yeah after seeing all these like big cathedrals and really old buildings i can't help to think like is there a place in the world where i could go and see the same thing but the paint the people in the paintings and the sculptures look like me you know what I'm saying? Like, is there a, a place in the world where it's like a huge palace or a huge sculpture or something or a huge painting, but of like a, of like a black and brown person? I would think it would be in Africa. I know Africa is on my bucket list, but I don't know. I haven't heard of anything like that in Africa. Who knows? Maybe there is, but I ain't been taught about it. But I'm going to have to look that up, though, and then go there.